This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Ram stunned the industry when it unveiled its electrified Ram pickup called the Ram Charger with a 3.6 liter V6 as a range extender. That range extender gives the electric truck a claim 690 miles of range or 1110 kilometers. But it looks like that V6 could just be a stopgap measure. We think the long-term plan is to replace the V6 with a fuel cell. Last week we reported that Stellantis had started making fuel cells at a new plant that will eventually go into Ram pickups. And now we have a bit more information. That new plant is in France and the fuel cells will be made by a company called Symbio, which is a joint venture between Stellantis, Michelin and Forvia. Symbio also has a joint venture with Scheffler to make fuel cell components. The target is to start building fuel cells in 2025, though it's unclear if they would go into Ram pickups at that time. Symbio is also targeting vans and medium and heavy duty trucks, and it's searching for a U.S. manufacturing site as well. For Via's contributions are fuel cell components and hydrogen fuel tanks, and it's working on a rectangular tank instead of using cylindrical ones, which would make packaging far easier. Forvia is also working with another vehicle manufacturer in the U.S., but it declined to name who it is. Well, here's what could be a seismic change. At the COP28 Climate Summit in Dubai, nearly 200 countries agreed to transition away from oil, gas, and coal. The goal is to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. The countries also agreed to triple their renewable energy use by 2030, accelerate efforts to cut coal, and promote carbon capture and storage. The deal is aiming to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit over pre-industrial times. However, it's now up to individual countries to implement and invest in the goals of the deal. As we've seen in the past, the ambitious goals set forth in these climate conferences usually fall well behind their deadlines. But even so, when the countries of the world decide it's time to start getting rid of fossil fuels, it's a seismic change. There's a lot of skepticism over whether or not battery swapping makes any sense, but we keep seeing more and more automakers looking into it. Venusia, a Chinese brand that's part of the Dongfeng Nissan joint venture, is partnering with the city of Guangzhou to provide it with battery swapping taxis. The automaker just delivered 150 of those taxis and will provide the city with 700 in total. Venusia says its taxis provide more than $3,200 in savings compared to gas-powered vehicles. And we're also starting to see battery swapping spreading beyond passenger vehicles. You may remember that earlier this year, CATL formed a partnership to build battery swapping stations for long-haul trucks in China, and Stellantis is working with Ample to develop battery swapping for its EVs. At CES January 9th through 12th, 2024, Intrepid's looking forward to seeing you at our booth 3666 Las Vegas Convention Center in the West Hall. We'll be demonstrating the latest and greatest in the software-defined vehicles and Zornal architectures, automotive Ethernet technologies like 10-base T1S and multi-gigabit. See you at CES 2024 Las Vegas Convention Center in West Hall booth 3666 or visit IntrepidCS.com slash sales. GM says one of the reasons it's dropping Android Auto and Apple CarPlay from its vehicles is safety. Motor Trend spoke with GM's head of product for infotainment, who said that connection issues between those apps and the vehicle causes people to pick up their phone too often to see what the problem is. That was one of the motivations for GM developing its own software platform called Altify, which integrates Google directly into the vehicle. That means interactions between human and car should be more seamless, and the system will have more capabilities. Not only will users be able to make phone calls, send texts, and set navigation, they could also adjust most of the HVAC settings with voice commands. But safety and better interactions are not the only factors for making the change. 
GM will get access to more of the data generated by people inside of its cars as well. And there's other benefits of Altify, like the ability to buy stuff from your car. By the end of the decade, GM thinks people will spend as much as $25 billion a year on subscription services. Could this be a look at how automakers will rank in the U.S. market in the future? Experian, the data and credit reporting company, published a list of automakers based on their EV market share. Not surprisingly, Tesla tops the list with over 56% of the EV segment, but it lost almost 8.5 points a share compared to last year. The Hyundai Group did some of that damage with 8% share, which includes Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis. General Motors is next with 6.7%, followed by Ford at 5.8%. Volkswagen and Audi combined have 5.3%, and Rivian rounds out the top six with 3.7%. BMW and Mercedes are also doing well selling EVs, but we don't have market share numbers for them. And these numbers? ought to cause concern for other legacy automakers who are not on the list because it represents a whole new ranking in the U.S. market. Stellantis is kicking off a competition that could help it find a new generation of battery talent. Along with the U.S. Department of Energy and Argonne National Lab, Stellantis announced the Battery Workforce Challenge, which is a three-year competition where participants have to design, build, test, and integrate an advanced EV battery into a future Stellantis vehicle. Twelve universities and vocational schools have been selected, and in 2026, the winning teams will get dozens of awards, $100,000 in prize money, and the chance of getting a job at one of these companies. Stellantis says the vehicle used for the competition will be announced early next year, which we expect to be revealed at CES. Scout Motors is opening an R&D center in Michigan, something that will bother other automakers in the state since Scout will undoubtedly start rating them for talent. It already nabbed Chris Benjamin away from Stellantis to become its chief designer, and it will be after other top talent as well. Scout is locating in the suburb of Novi because it's so close to so many other engineering sources. GM, Ford, Toyota, Nissan, and Hyundai have large engineering and R&D campuses in the area, as do almost all of the global Tier 1 suppliers. Michigan has also landed $14 billion in EV and battery investment, which is creating a large EV talent pool. Looks like I need one of those Komatsu 930Es just to hand out all the bonus points we offered to anyone who could name the division of General Motors that made mining trucks from 1953 to 1981. Lots of you were quick to point out the name of the company as Terex. It was founded by GM in the late 1960s and later sold off, but Terex is still making big trucks to this day. And I should award extra, extra bonus points to anyone who brought up Euclid. It also made big trucks, and GM owned it before Terex. Euclid was founded in the early 1900s and was purchased by GM in the early 1950s. But due to an antitrust lawsuit, GM was eventually forced to sell Euclid, and that's when it formed Terex. And with that little history lesson, we end today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game 